here's one of my favorite parts of getting a new toy. Opening the box. Let's see what's inside there. Your instruction manual. The unit itself. This is the new System B handpiece. It's really nice. It's got a silicone cover, uh, easily pushed button with a light on it. I'll show you that later. And the cord has this medical grade plug that can stand up to any kind of abuse in the clinical environment. This is the motor powered extruder. It's a new gutta percha gun that's in line, so it's going to be able to stand on your. Uh, equipment hangers, your handpiece hangers, just like your suction in your handpiece. Same kind of cord. This is the plug. Very high grade. This is the uh, DC converter. Um, I usually put that behind the cabinet or in a place that doesn't show. This uh, provides low voltage current to your System B elements unit so that it's safer in the operating environment. And uh, in each kit, there is an extra autoclave sterilization heat sleeve. This is for the System B heat source. There's another one at the bottom here for the extruder. These are autoclaved. You can quickly change them out, and uh, you're not going to have to touch anything that isn't perfectly sterile. This is a very cool concept. The hangers are quite ingenious. I ask that they be removable so that we can place them on, just an Allen wrench will do it, take them off, and place them on a handpiece hanger that you have your handpieces and suction devices on. After you attach them to the hanger, it's quite easy to place the System B heat source and the extruder in the same arrangement as you have hand pieces or suction tips. Take the 12 volt cord, plug it into the back, we're powered up. The red plug for the System B heat source goes into the red receptacle. It's going to sit there until we're ready to put our gloves on. The yellow plug for the extruder goes into the yellow plug and the extruder waits for the sleeves as well. The sterilized sleeves are taken out of the autoclave bag and placed on the two devices to their little click stops and we're ready to go. The flat face plate allows easy placement of protective plastic sheeting. We're now ready to activate the unit. The button in the lower right boots up the uh, control system. You can see on the left the system B icons and on the right the extruder icons. The first time you hook up the extruder handpiece you need to push the power button and then the extruder piston return button this will calibrate the handpiece. It does not need to be done after the initial time. This icon shows the cartridge is empty or missing. We open the cartridge case, remove one of the cartridges. It has the needle, the gutta percha, and the attachment nut. And you can see that the needle is already pre-bent, which is very convenient. It's placed in the end of the extruder. It is simply rotated to lock it in place. Now we're ready to heat the gutta percha in the cartridge. Pushing on the upper right starts the little heating icons here. You're going to see in a very short period of time the thermometer going up in heat. When it reaches the top, the extruder will be ready to go. This button is for different temperature settings for the extruder. If I push it and it says S, that means synthetic. That's for Epiphany or Cybron Endo's product, Real Seal. It's a lower temperature setting and that's going to be appropriate for those cartridges. We push it again. It has a no heat sign. There's 
the likelihood that this extruder will be made to extrude cartridges of calcium hydroxide and other materials in the future. Forget a percha, we want no icon and we'll get the right heat. There are several adjustments to speed. When we push the right arrow, we get an arrow, one arrow at first. We push it again, we get two arrows. When we push it again, it goes back to one. So these two speeds are available on the menu driven display. The other speed adjustment is on the toggle switch. The toggle switch pushed forward gives us a blue light. That's the fast speed. Pushing on the back of the toggle gives us a green light. That's the slower range of speed. Now if we push this button for only one arrow, each of these two settings, the blue in the front of the toggle and the green in the back of the toggle will extrude slower. So a total of four speeds. Before we place the needle into the canal for backfilling, we want to do what's called priming the needle. We run the motor until a little bit comes out the end, wipe it off, and we're going to know that we have got a percha right to the end of the needle. There's the equivalent of a fuel gauge on the back side of the extruder. Red equals the gutta percha left in the cartridge. As it goes away and the white takes its place, we'll see that it's closer and closer to empty. If the gutta percha runs out, the piston will automatically retract. If you find that your amount of gutta percha left may not finish the backfilling case you're going to work on and you want to replace the cartridge, simply pushing this button We'll retract it, okay, here we go. and the needle can be removed. The top button is for heat testing. You can see the icon shows a heat tester on the side of the crown of the tooth. You can vary the temperatures for this with the temperature control button. Read your manual, you'll see how to make your custom set setting remain the next time you turn it on. The next button down, this electric heat cautery device uh, is very effective and it will be available sometime in early 2006. The next button down is the low temperature down pack. Uh, this can also be used when there is a one cone backfill technique being planned. You'll see that it has a default setting of 100 degrees. If we have a short canal or if we want to make sure that we down pack and do not stick the gutta perch cone to the plugger, we do it at this lower temperature. The one I use the most is the lowest button. This is high temperature down packing and the default setting is 200 degrees C. Once we set the proper system B heat setting, the pluggers fit into the end and the hexagonal nut locks the plugger in the direction that we desire relative to the switching unit. You can have it this way for an upper tooth, this way for a lower tooth. The important thing is we no longer have to tighten a collet, which saves us a lot of time when we're down packing uh, multiple rooted teeth. The button has a little light so it shows you when the heat is on and after four seconds, even if you keep the heat on, it automatically turns off. There's a little click you'll hear at five seconds and at 10 seconds there's two clicks. It tells you when you've held a sustained condensation force long enough. If we hit the four second mark and want more heat, we simply, we simply retouch the switch and get another four seconds of heat. This is a nice safety device because newbies to the technique, you can't add too much heat and uh, warm the root up to a dangerous level. I think you will agree that with a wide range of heat source functions, this device is the most versatile, most sophisticated filling device in the field of endodontics.